this uh, this study was done well for for a few reasons. I mean, one that uh, given the systemic impact of gout, reducing the burden of urate in these patients is critical in improving their quality of life and and reducing their disability and and uh, morbidity in general. And in these patients who were treating with pegloticase specifically, a lot of times this is kind of their last hope, so to speak. In other words, they failed other medications or been intolerant to the typical gout medications or just they're just not enough and they're we're so far behind, so to speak, as far as how much crystal burden they have. They're having a lot of, like I said, just a lot of difficulty with daily quality of life stuff, whether it's putting shoes on or writing or holding a cup of coffee or anything like that. These patients are, are, are having constant flares and, and missing work and all those kind of things. So we wanted to get these, make sure these patients had the uh, best chance for success and make sure this medication does what it's supposed to do. And that's decrease that crystal burden and decrease the uric acid and keep it there. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of takeaways. I mean, um, we, we basically found that uh, there were numerous different types of immunomodulatory, Im immunomodulation or immunomodulatory therapy or immunosuppressive therapy used and potentially could be used to effectively improve outcomes with this medication. We looked at uh, 82 cases or 82 patients from 10 different studies. Two of those studies were actual clinical trials and the rest were case reports, either case series or case reports of individual patients. And what we found was an overall response rate of 82.9% uh, success and uh, with the medication. And that's just about double of what the pivotal clinical trials showed uh, back with monotherapy case. And uh, so this is kind of providing some real world evidence that both patients and providers are, can be comfortable using immunomodulation or immunosuppressive therapy with case to improve outcomes. I wouldn't say surprised. I mean, one of the things that was a little bit, uh, I guess, surprising, but the numbers were small, was that um, the azathioprine probably didn't do as well as I do um, compared to methotrexate, for example. Now that said, a lot of a lot of providers in general underdose azathioprine for whatever disease state we're treating, so that might have something to do with it. But also, you know, I think that this this publication or emphasizes that gout is not just a disease of intermittent flares, and it's important to recognize that um, these patients are kind of in a situation where. Um, the disease state has kind of gotten out of hand and needs to be treated aggressively and that it's important to treat these patients to target. And just like we, you know, most rheumatologists would kind of maybe scoff at, or some rheumatologists would scoff at, you know, using immunosuppression or immunomodulation therapy uh, with these patients, just given their comorbid diseases they typically have or can have. But I think if they kind of compared or use the analogy of a rheumatoid arthritis patient or a psoriatic arthritis patient that has severe disease, you know, those patients require more than one therapy. And, and usually it's a, a biologic plus a DMARD or a disease modifying anti-aromatic drug like methotrexate. So really and truly it's, it's really no different. And these patients have just as much, uh, if not more in some cases, morbidity and, and decreased quality of life as those patients do. So I think it's important to and hopefully this other rheumatologist will recognize that this study is, is hopefully, well, I should say it should become standard of care. In other words, that, you know, using more than one therapy is okay in gout, just like it is in other, or other diseases that we treat. Yeah, right now there's actually an ongoing randomized clinical uh, trial comparing monotherapy case with case plus methotrexate. And so we're excited about this and the data should be coming out hopefully uh, this year, by the end of the year, if not before. I mean, just that I want everybody to realize these are kind of, these are real, uh, or at least reinforce real world and uh, findings and research that's kind of been accumulating over the last several years. And it's important that, uh, that this co-treatment approach is a, a good one and a valuable one. And a valuable option to help ensure that these patients 
get the response they they deserve and we expect from Peglota case. And you know, ultimately we need to maximize response treatment in order to manage the impact and complications associated with severe gout and improve outcomes in the long run for these patients and, and basically kind of get them back to where they should be and where they should never been to, to in most cases where they should have never gotten to to begin with. 